Hi, I'm Jennifer Seelish and I'm a second year medical student at the University of Western Ontario. Hi, I'm Dr. Andy Thompson, Assistant Professor of Medicine at the University of Western Ontario. Today we'll be examining the knee. For those of you who miss kindergarten or first year medical school, the knees are located here and there are two of them. So when you're examining the knee, you always want to examine both knees together so you have one to compare to. Now when examining any joint in the lower body, I like to have the person in standing, sitting, and then in the supine position. When examining a joint in the lower extremity, the first thing I like to do is look at the person's footwear. While these shoes are obviously in fabulous taste, they may be the source of this person's knee pain. A shoe like this may be more appropriate for someone complaining of knee pain. With any joint examination, you want to start by looking at the joint, feeling the joint, and then moving the joint. And This is standard for any joint you're going to examine. So for the knee in the standing position, we'll start by looking at it. And we want to start by looking at the cutaneous structures. We've outlined them here in color to make it easier for you. This is the patella, the medial peripatellar groove, the lateral peripatellar groove, the suprapatellar pouch, the patellar tendon, the anserine bursa, and the quadriceps muscle. Now when you're looking at the knee, the first thing you want to look at is scars. A midline joint incision is compatible with a total knee replacement. These smaller scars around the knee are commonly seen after arthroscopic surgery. Now coming back over to this knee, the next thing you want to do is look for swelling. The commonest places you see swelling are a loss of the medial and lateral peripatellar grooves. You may also see swelling up in the suprapatellar pouch. And this means that the knee itself is swollen. There's other spots around the knee you can look for swelling. Over the patellar in the prepatellar bursa, over the patellar tendon, and even over, occasionally over the anserine bursa. The commonest muscle atrophy that occur with the knee is quadriceps. So when someone comes in with knee pain, take a look at the quadriceps and compare side to side to see if the affected side is actually smaller than the non-affected side. And sometimes you'll actually see a bit of a scalloping on the affected side. Now we'll turn Jen around here and you always want to look at the back of the knee as well. And we've highlighted here the popliteal fossa. Uh, and this is a common spot you get swelling or a baker's cyst. So now we're going to go on to looking at alignment of the knee. And you want to look in two planes, anterior and lateral. In the anterior plane, we want to look at the alignment of the knee. And, the, and we'll talk about the common malalignments that you see, starting with a valgus malalignment. So valgus malalignment, the knees are together, and then they move out to the side. You can see that on here and here. Some people call that knock knee. Then we'll move on to a varus alignment. And the varus alignment is a bow-legged alignment, like this. And how people remember varus, they say, varus, my horse. Now we'll have Jen turn to the side, and we'll look at the lateral. Now you want to look at the knee, uh, and most people have a little bit of hyperextension to the knee when they lock their knee back. Sometimes that hyperextension actually uh, is a little bit more than expected, and we call that a recurvatum. So you want to look at this angle here. Now it's normal for women to have a little bit of hyperextension in the knees, but less common for men. The commoner, commoner knee malalignment problem you get with a swollen knee is a flexion contracture, where they actually can't lock the knee back fully. And this is uh, an alignment where the knee is held in flexion. So it's important to look both anteriorly and laterally. We're now going to move on to look at uh, an assessment of the gait. When examining any joint of the lower extremity, it's important to look at the gait. Now first, we're going to start by talking about the normal gait cycle. And it comp it's composed of four phases. And Jen will demonstrate them for us. We'll start with a heel strike, stance phase, a swing through the other leg, and then a toe off. And you want to look at all four phases of the gait cycle to determine where the abnormalities are. 
Now we're going to inspect the gate. So we'll have Jen walk, and we'll, we'll think about the normal gate cycle. The heel strike, the stance face, the swing through, and the toe off. And you want to look at the gate both with the patient walking towards you and the patient walking away. Again, heel strike, stance face, swing through, and toe off. Now there's two common abnorm abnormal gates we see with the knee. And the first one is a shortened stance face on the affected limb, or sometimes referred to it as an antalgic gait. And Jen will demonstrate that. We would often just call this limping. So Jen's got a shortened stance face on that right leg. You can see she's limping along on that leg. The other gait abnormality we can see is something called a steppage gait. And this occurs when the person has got a significant flexion contracture of the knee and can't get their knee straight, so end up walking on their toes on the affected side. And you can see Jen's doing a steppage gait here. Now we finish looking at the knee in the standing position. We're not going to feel the knee, we're going to keep that until Jen's in the supine position, and we'll end up by moving the knee. The best way to move the knee is to have Jen squat down, so I'll we'll ask her to squat down. Now this gives you two pieces of information. It gives you first of all range of motion, and secondly it's a cursory test for power. And when you look at Jen, she gets full flexion of the knee, in fact both knees, up to 135 degrees. We'll have her stand back up again, and she gets back to zero degrees of extension. Now you might not want to do this test with one of your elderly patients with arthritis in the knee, or you might find yourself picking them up off the floor, and then perhaps a call to your lawyer. You probably want to avoid this. Now we've got Jen in the sitting position. Now in this position, there's not a lot to look at, feel, or move uh, with the knee examination, but it always reminds me to check the neurovascular status of the uh, lower extremity. You want to check the myotomes for strength, the dermatomes for sensation, and the reflexes. And the reflex we check around the knee is the L3-4 reflex or patellar reflex. And we'll just check Jen's here, there, and there. Perfect. You want to check both sides. Now we're going to ask Jen to lift her leg up. We want to check the vascular status of the extremity, being the posterior tibial artery and the dorsalis pedis. This always reminds me as well to make sure you always examine the joint above and below. So in this case it would be the hip and ankle when you're doing the knee.